Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're going to have um, a fun morning planting more fantastic perennials and shrubs back here in our backyard um, area. So what we're going to do is we are going to first plant four of the different types of pugster butterfly bushes in these um, the two new flower beds here in the backyard. We were doing that nursery tour, uh, I don't know, a week, 10 days ago, and I, we were up at production and I was showing you the different pugster butterfly bushes. And when we got done filming that video, I was like, Jerry, I really think I need some of these butterfly bushes in the backyard. <laughs> and he was like, okay. So I did, I picked one of each color because I wanted to have them in the yard. We don't have any pugsters um, in this backyard space. I do have some pugster whites along the pathway near the rose arch. So I do have those. So we're gonna plant four different color pugsters in these back two flower beds, but we are also going to plant some lavender in the ground. If you have followed us for um, any length of time, you know that we do struggle with lavender in the ground. Remember, we are North Carolina, zone 7B, um, just west of Charlotte, and we have very thick red clay soil that holds moisture really well. And that's a good thing, right? Um, so we don't have to worry about our soil draining out too fast. It holds lots of nutrients. It really is a good thing except for plants that don't like to have really white, wet feet and like to stay dry, such as lavender. Also, because we are here in North Carolina, our nights do not get cool and dry, especially here in July and August, and this year even June. So June, July, August, into September, our nights can be extremely hot and humid and sticky and it doesn't dry out. And that can be a really hard thing for plants because they don't get a reprieve from that massive amount of moisture that, um, that is associated um, with living in the South. Um, so we are going to plant a new, to me, variety. This is a phenomenal. And so I have it back here. Phenomenal is, from all accounts, a really great lavender to do in the South. Um, we have had great success stories from you viewers who live in like deep South, Alabama, Mississippi, who grow lavender and it does phenomenal. Ah! It does phenomenal for you. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, and then also our friend Kata from Walters Gardens recommended this. Kata lives here in North Carolina. She knows plants. She knows what our uh, environment and our climate is like. And I have struggled even with like Proven Winners Sweet Romance. Laura can grow amazing, gorgeous lavender with zero work whatsoever. I can kill that Sweet Romance lavender in about two seconds flat. As soon as I put it in the ground, I just struggle. Now this year I have put it in a container and it's doing really, really well. So I'm hoping that that will be my success story for the Sweet Romance. Phenomenal can handle our thick clay soil and our hot and humid nights. So that is what we are going to plant today. Let me show you what these beautiful plants look like. And you will see that I have all my tools here. I have got my biotone, we'll use that, the power planter, my gloves, oh, I need my gloves, and then we're gonna use the Fafford compost. I'll explain all of that in a minute. Now you can see already Mr. Bumblebee, well he just flew off, is here at Phenomenal. It is getting ready to bloom because we're growing it this year, so it's a little bit as far as the timing is off of the blooms, um, but Phenomenal is an English lavender and um, it will be 24, basically 24 to 32 inches tall. And then depending on where you live will determine how wide it is. Um, if you look at Walters Gardens website, which is where we get all of our perennials from, they say that it can get like four feet wide. And I was talking to Kata and she said that happens in cooler climates. So if you're in Michigan or, cause it's hardy in zones um, four to nine. So if you're in those cooler climates, you can expect phenomenal to get nice and big and wide and gorgeous, right? A huge plant. In the South, she says it's gonna be a little bit more um, contained. It's gonna be a little bit smaller. So basically a two, two and a half tall and wide, which is what I'm counting on. And which is, I kind of hope it'll stay that size because that way it means I can plant more. 
So um, yeah, and of course, lavender is full sun. Back here, it is a definite full sun bed. We are blessed with some cloud cover today, so it may seem a little cloudy, but it will bloom basically um, uh, it depends again where you are, but it could be like early, early summer and throughout. Um, so we are going to plant this phenomenal in two locations right here at the, um, the back steps coming off the patio. So we're going to do a group in front of the um, Daisy May. Shasta daisies and then coming over here we're going to plant another um, section right here in this little hole right here. So that is what we are doing. Um, I do want to give you an update though really quick. You know me, I, if we're in a space I have to show you some things. Um, two things. Uh, one, I'll give you an update on the echinacea that we just were here and we planted the other day. It is doing really really well. We have been blessed with some fantastic rain. So you can see this is the um, Sombrero Granada Gold and it is doing really nicely, real pretty. And then um, what I wanna show you while we're here is one of the new introductions of hibiscus to the Proven Winners line for next year. There, this is Valentine's Crush. Look at that beautiful, really like, cherry apple red bloom gorgeous i told jerry last night we were out on the patio and i said it's getting ready to bloom because i could see the little buds um, and so it has just started blooming this is the first bloom today gorgeous i love this plant nice real pretty green foliage again full full sun hibiscus can take lots of water and it looks really pretty right next to the luscious citron lantana. So this is Valentine's Crush. No, yes, Valentine's Crush. Sorry, because the other one, the other new one is the Lilac Crush. And Lilac Crush, as you might imagine, is a very beautiful purple. And it is a very soft purple. So I put that... Uh, Lilac Crush, oh, trying to get those words right. Words are hard. Um, I put it right here. I did three of them um, to give you perspective. So the Incredible Hydrangeas, Double Play Doozies. Um, here are the three Lilac Crush. And they have been blooming for a week now. Um, so there's three of them. They've got one, two, and then the third one right here. That is my nine bark right here, but look at the lilac crush. Really soft, soft lavender, hot pink center, beautiful plant. Um, this was, you know, this is brand, this is the first year. They sent them to us as little small babes. Rapid growers just did not miss a beat and are doing great. So we've got those there and I've got this nice beautiful hedge. I imagine it growing up those three together and just really filling in this space. Now, while we're here, it's a, um, it's a Monday morning and yesterday was rainy and it was a glorious day. It was fantastic. I was inside all day, which was wonderful, but by the end of the day, I was getting restless. So now it's Monday morning. I'm very excited to show you all these things. So bear with me. I want to show you one thing because this is a good update. A lot of people have been asking about this. Little Lime Punch. We are trialing this, testing this um, in conjunction with um, Spring Meadow Nursery because we want to see does Little Lime Punch turn pink in the south? That is a big uh, question mark because we don't know. This, these plants were planted here last year. I say last year, I just kept them alive. That was my goal. This year they are thriving and they are fantastic plants. And look, do you see what I see? I see pink color already here in the middle of July and they are starting to turn a little bit pink. So that is a very exciting development. These shrubs are fantastic. They are nice and tight and really thick, sturdy stems. I have another one right over here on the other side. Look at that. Look how just gorgeous these plants are. So I am very excited. I am very encouraged um, how they are performing. So if you get a chance to get the little lime punch, go for it. Um, 
We will have these available at Creekside. I don't know the exact timeline on that, but if you see little lime punches, I would encourage you to get them. Um, even if they don't turn pink for you, but they're starting to turn pink for us, the habit on these things are fantastic. My mama was over here the other day and she was like, Jenny, they're almost like glowing. They're iridescent, gorgeous plants. Now, without further ado, sorry, I got distracted. We're gonna do the lavender first and then we're gonna move to the butterfly bushes. So I'm gonna get everything set up and then we'll start to planting. Alrighty, so I have placed out the lavender. I am spacing them um, two of my feet apart. That's the way I measure. So they are in kind of a triangle, two of my feet apart from one another. Yes, this one lavender is close to the petunias. That's all right because petunias are an annual. This is a perennial. Next year, if the lavender is nice and big, I can do something different with the petunias. Now, what I'm gonna use is my power planter auger i have got the um this is the five inch heavy duty tip auger on it um, i will always have the drill the augers that we use from power planter in the video description like working links so if you click on the video description there's that little kind of that arrow click on that the whole description will come down and there are working links so you can check that out go to power planter um, makes an easy work of this job, especially with my clay soil, it just breaks it up. So what I will do is pull back my mulch, I will dig my hole, and then I am gonna use a little bit of the Fafford compost. Now, the reason I'm gonna explain to you why, because if you look on the growing tips for lavender, it says that it does really well in like bad, gravelly, like well-draining soil, no need, that doesn't like the rich hummus, you know, composty soil. The Fafford has a lot of that aged pine bark finds, which is going to help this soil drain more. Now, I'm only gonna put a little bit in there, like one part of the Fafford to four parts of the native soil. I'm not gonna like completely take out all my native soil and use that. You do not wanna do that. You just want, if you're gonna amend your soil, just add a little bit and then you can top dress. Um, so even though it does have some compost in it, it has, in my opinion, a little bit more of the, the pine bark vines, <clears throat> excuse me, which will help in the drainage. And that is what we want with this lavender. Now, you will notice though it is on a hill. So that is definitely gonna work for my favor. It is on a hill, it will drain well. This bed is on irrigation. However, there is not irrigation lines going to be directly on these lavender. It goes from the Incredibles, comes down to the petunias, and goes down the spireas. So even though the bed is irrigated, these will not be on direct irrigation. Um, and then of course we will use biotone. I always use my biotone. That is the starter fertilizer. And that is specifically for healthy root growth. We want strong, healthy roots on our perennials because if you have a strong, healthy root system, you have a strong, happy plant up top. So dig the, just do all that, get these planted, and then we'll move over to the companion piece next door. So I have my hole dug and I have um, the biotone and the fafford in here and I'm just mixing it up in the hole with the native soil. Again, lavender hates to be wet, so I am definitely going to plant this um, a little bit on the high side. So I'm gonna actually put some soil back in there, mix that back up. When you have clay soil, that's the thing you want your shrubs and your perennials to be um, the root ball to stick out of the ground a little bit. They've got plenty of roots in the ground to take up their nutrients, but when you do it this way, you are ensuring that the plant is not gonna have water sitting on the crown because that's the last thing you want with plants that hate to be wet. So you will notice that the um, root ball, go, 
is sticking up above the ground and that's okay because then I come back with my nice thick mulch and I come up and I kind of snug it in, right? It's like a blanket. You're gonna snug it in so it's not gonna be exposed, but yet it will drain and do quite well and quite happy. So that's what we're gonna do for the other two right here. Mix in the soil, make sure that my root ball is up high and that it will drain well, and then we'll move on to the next ones. So we have got the first three planted and I'm going to show you that um, these plantings are not going to be the exact same. So we've got these three here right along kind of the edge of where the rocks are. They're in a nice triangle. I imagine that when they are full grown it will be ni one nice large clump together. Um, so that's going to take I would think like a year or so at least maybe. I don't know. First time growing this, we'll see. It's all an experiment. And then over here, you will see that I have them planted very differently or I have them placed very differently rather. My space doesn't allow to have that same kind of triangle formation. I'm afraid that I would just get too far into where the water comes down right here. I know that Jerry is going to fix that for me. So my closest one is a little bit up here on the hill so it will drain. And then we did more of a swoosh. Um, and I cannot, do not want to, plant anything in this space right here because our gas tank is under there and that's where they have to have access and I am not going to plant <laughs> plants where the fellas are going to be traipsing in and out of. So we're going to plant these three in a little bit of a swoosh. Again, those are the Daisy May Shasta Daisies behind it. You can see that I have already deadheaded these. Um, so I think there should be enough room between everybody, um, but we'll we'll just see it. You, If you have your amazing daisies, your Shasta Daisies, and maybe they look like these. Um, this is the time that you need to go ahead and deadhead them. I did not deadhead these two clumps at the same time because these were still looking very nice, um, whereas opposed to these guys, um, they were the first ones to bloom, therefore they were done. And I will do to these what I did to those. I just chop them down and maybe we'll get another flush. We'll see, but definitely want to go ahead and deadhead those. Um, so if I have time today after I get everything planted, I'll go ahead and tackle that. We're going to plant these three lavenders the exact same way I did those three over there. Before I covered up this last lavender with the mulch, I wanted to show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say that your root ball should be sticking up above the soil line. So you can see, here's my soil line, right? Here's the top of my root ball. It is above, like literally sticking out of the ground about an inch. Well draining is the key here. And then all you do is bring back your mulch and you kind of hide that. And then the, the mulch is going to hold in some of that moisture. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So now you don't see any of that exposed root ball. It will do great. There's tons of roots in the ground that can soak up that moisture, but I don't have to worry about my lavender you know, just sitting in water or water pooling up around the root ball and rotting. We now have our six lavender in the ground. They are going to look fantastic. The pollinators are already starting to come. Super excited about this. Of course, I will keep you updated on how Phenomenal does. It'll take me just a little bit of time, right, to see how it really progresses and does well. I have very high hopes for this because, oh, I've always wanted to have lots of lavender because it is just such a fantastic plant. We'll keep you updated on that. Now we are going to turn our attention to some butterfly bushes, more pollinator attractors for sure. So you can see we have um, the 
This is Pinker, that is right there in front of the Aztec King Mangave. Then we move on down the road a little bit here and we have Pugster Amethyst that is going to be behind the ultraviolet phlox um, in this little area. And then we have two more over here in this smaller backyard bed. We have got the um, just Pugster Pink, which is a very nice light baby doll pink. That is going to be beside a double play doozy. And then this is the Amsonia. So, and then of course the Fairy Trail Bride. So those colors will work really nicely together. And then over here, just a little bit away, we have the Pugster Blue. Again, in front of the double play doozies, nice hot pink. Then the other Amsonia, and then my um, maidenhair ginkgo tree shrub. Um, so that is what we're gonna do, is put those in here. I'm gonna bring, bring up my supplies and we'll get these in the ground. Okay, so one of the things that is very different and unique about butterfly bushes is that um, they hate to be fussed over. They do not like compost. They really just want to be left alone in the full sun so that they can grow and bloom and thrive and be very, very happy. Very much like lavender, they hate to have wet feet. They cannot stand to sit in wet, soggy ground. If you lose a butterfly bush in the winter, odds are, especially if you're in the south, odds are it was because it was way too wet and they drowned. So again, we are gonna plant these butterfly bushes high, just like we did lavender. I want my root ball sticking out of the ground by an inch or so. The pugsters are great because they're gonna be like a two by two. In the south, they can get a little bit closer, maybe to like a three by three if they're very happy. Um, pinker is the new one. It is a much more vibrant pink, gorgeous color on it. Butterfly bushes are hardy in zones, five to nine, very adaptable. Um, so you just want to give them the sun, let them go, and we will use biotone, and that is it. I am still going to use my five inch um, auger. I could move up to the nine, but I just, one, I just don't want to go through the trouble of switching it out. And two, with the clay soil, I really like using the five inch. So I'll make a little bit multiple holes and then connect them together. talk about care and maintenance on your butterfly bushes. Butterfly bushes bloom on new growth. So that means in late winter, early spring, you're going to want to come in and shape up your butterfly bushes. Now, pugsters, because they are petite, you're not going to want to prune them real severe. I mean, you're going to look at the total plant and maybe cut it back by like a third. Another thing you can do throughout the season, what I'm doing right now, is what we call deadheading. And that is simply where you come in and you take your old blooms and you cut them off. So you're gonna go down to um, below that dead bloom and you're going to simply cut it off. You will see where there are probably more buds coming out and obviously you want to leave those and you want to take off the old guys. Now, is this absolutely necessary? No, it is not. But it does make the plant look prettier, it cleans it up, and it will help encourage new blooms, I mean new growth, which means new blooms. Um, the, honestly, as far as me, it just depends on the situation, where they are. My, my bigger butterfly bushes, like the Miss series, I very rarely, um, will come in and deadhead simply because they're further away, you're not up close on them. If, if the opportunity allows and I'm up close and I'm like, oh, I have my clippers, then I'll go ahead and dead heaven. It's not absolutely necessary. Again, it does make a very prettier plant, encourages new growth, which means new blooms. Um, and then they just get water. They don't need in the, the biotone is a great starter fertilizer. So I don't need to fertilize these for the rest of the season. 
late winter, early spring, when I prune it, I can certainly give it a little bit of plant tone, and that is it. Does not need water soluble fertilizer. That is for your flowering annuals, not for your shrubs. Just make sure they have adequate water, but butterfly bushes, once they are established, are pretty drought tolerant. There is irrigation in this bed. There is not one directly on this plant because I don't want to drown it. So I have got pinker in. Next, we're gonna do amethyst, then pink, and then blue. to my sweet friends today's project is now complete i can check that off the to-do list it feels fantastic so let's just review really quickly what we did we planted uh, four pugster butterfly bushes pugster blue is right here and she already has a butterfly on her you see that look at that i'm telling you they are called butterfly bushes for a reason and that sweet little butterfly is just very happy because she gets to go in and get all that sweet nectar. So that is Pugster Blue. Then right over here between the Doozy, the Fairy Trail Bride, and the Amsonia, we have Pugster Pink. You can see that it is a very soft baby doll pink, but it is a huge bloom. Nice and fat and big. Very happy. Um, so that is the two that are in this bed and then as we mosey our way on over to the other bed look look at that beautiful swallowtail that is pugster amethyst that butterfly my friend is also very happy huge butterfly look at that look at that could care less that i am two feet away now brenna on the other hand may scare her nope there we go gorgeous oh love it yes my sweet darling there you go and then brenna no 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 <laughs> brenna cannot eat butterflies and then over here we have pinker and pinker is again nice deep more of a hot pink an intense pink it literally is pinker than pink and we have a sweet little honeybee over here real nice pugsters nice small habit but nice big fat blooms on them. You see that honeybee? Everybody is very happy. And then I'm gonna turn the camera directly ever so slowly, so not to make you seasick. Directly behind me, we have the steps. And the steps have our um, lavender planted on each side. So you can see we've got the three here and we've got the three there. Um, I, was also able to go ahead and had some time. I was like, dadgummit, Jenny, while you're here, get it done. I don't know if you're like me. It's like, I'm finally learning about myself. Don't say, oh, I'll come back and do that. No, if you're here in the space and you have time, do it. So I deadheaded my daisies and I went ahead and deadheaded the nicotina. So amazing daisies. Um, this is the Daisy May. You can see it was really just gave it a haircut. I grabbed it up in big clumps and cut it back. You can see we've got new growth coming out of the center. So this will flush out really nicely. And then these are nicotina plants. This is called Only the Lonely. I started it from seed last year. It's technically not supposed to be a perennial, but this is the hottest part of my garden and it came back really nice and big. Probably could use a little fertilizer because it's awful pale, um, but they produce these beautiful long white trumpet shaped flowers that smell delicious at night so you can smell it at night first thing in the morning trimmed it back i had done it um a little bit earlier like some of them 
a week or two ago and I didn't know if it'll rebloom but you can see that I cut it here and we've got new buds coming out so it should reflush um, but yeah so today's project is all done feels great now I can move on with the rest of my day I will obviously will definitely keep you updated on that phenomenal let you know how that performs here in North Carolina I have high hopes for it as always thanks so much for gardening the creek side y'all have a fantastic day we'll see you in the next video bye friends